Good afternoon to everyone. So today uh, we'll talk about the use of the falciform ligament as a crural reinforcement during uh, hiatoplasty for a diaphragmatic hernia after uh, an ivory esophagectomy. I have no disclosures to declare. Uh, the patient was a 70-year-old male who underwent an ivory esophagectomy in 2019 for an adenocarcinoma and had a normal postoperative course. However, two months after surgery, he complained of the sudden onset of nausea, epigastric pain, and dysphagia. So he underwent an abdominal X-ray, which uh, led us to the suspicion of a diaphragmatic hernia involving the transverse colon. And the um, suspicion was confirmed at the CT scan that, uh, as you can see, showed us the rise of the transverse colon up to the hepatic flexure. So we, decided, we scheduled the patient for uh, an emergency procedure that started with uh, an explorative laparoscopy, uh, which showed us uh, the presence of uh, a small amount of uh, inflammatory um, serum active fluid, both in the upper right uh, um, and the left quadrant. Then we proceeded with the reduction of the herniated colon. Um, and as you can see here, the reduction was luckily was quite easy because the herniation uh, happened fast. So uh, there was no time for adhesions uh, to become really strong. So luckily the reduction was quite easy even if the colon was uh, very dilated, as you can see here. So we completed the reduction uh, by pulling down uh, the colon and the greater momentum. And then at this point, we had to uh, check the correct position and the correct vas vascularization and the vitality of the gastric conduit, obviously. Uh, and as you can see here, the conduit was OK. So we completed the liberation of the, uh, of the diaphragm by uh, cutting these uh, adhesions. So we could see the real dimensions of the um, hiatal de defect. Here, you can see that the defect was quite uh, big. So we had to perform an, a lateral hiatoplasty. Uh, usually in these patients, we perform a posterior hiatoplasty, but obviously because of the presence of the gastric conduit in this patient, it was possible. So we performed a lateral hiatoplasty with uh, interrupted uh, non-absorbable um, stitches with extracorporeal note. We needed four stitches to complete the closure of the hiatus. And once the closure was completed, we decided to reinforce the hiatus by using the falciform ligament. Uh, so we started to, the liberation of the ligament from the anterior abdominal wall, paying attention to preserve its vascularization and its vitality. Once the liberation was completed, uh, we had to uh, check the length of the ligament in order to understand if uh, it was long enough to reach the hiatus and to cover it completely. The length was around 13 centimeters, so uh, long enough to uh, completely cover the hiatus. Uh, at this point, we uh, had to check the vitality of the ligament and its vascularization by the use of the endocinin green uh, uh, injection. So once we were sure that the ligament was vital, we transposed it over the gastric conduit to completely cover the hiatus, as you can see here. And we secured the ligament uh, again by using uh, interrupted uh, non-absorbable stitches, uh, one uh, against the anterior uh, part of the hiatus, uh, and the other one against the left diaphragmatic pillar. So the last part of the operation consisted in just checking the, that the gastric conduit was not stenotic because of the presence of the ligament. And we completed the operation by placing a mediastinal drain. We also performed an in, intraoperative endoscopy, but uh, we didn't have the images, so I cannot show you uh, the intraoperative endoscopy. The operation lasted 120 minutes. The postoperative course was uneventful, and the patient started an oral feeding on postoperative day three and was discharged home on postoperative day four. Uh, he also underwent a three months follow up with both a CT scan and a barium swallow study. Uh, the CT scan was um, absolutely normal and showed us a non dilated gastric conduit. 
and also the barium swallow study was normal and showed us the um, correct transit of the barium through the gastric conduit. I wanted to show you, uh, as a final part of the presentation, a recent publication that we did about this topic, uh, about 18 patients that we treated with this uh, technique uh, for primary giant hiatalernia, for recurrent hiatalernia, one case of post-sleeve gastrectomy hiatalernia, two cases of uh, uh, hyperlucid esophagectomy, and two cases of post-esophagectomy diaphragmatic hernias. Um, in this second table, uh, I wanted just to show you some interoperative data that we gathered, like uh, the time needed to mobilize and to suture the um, ligament at the diaphragm, its length, its width, and its viability at uh, ICG fluorescence, and the follow-up of these patients that was quite uh, short, but we hope to publish soon another paper with more patients and with uh, um, a longer follow-up. So that's it. Thank you very much.